On May 6, 2022, Alberto Caballero and his team of astronomers blew up the scientific community. In the International Journal of Astrobiology, they shared the results of a long-term study of the most mysterious alien signal in history, and they found a star as similar as possible to the Sun. The study says that it is possible that an inhabited planet orbits around this star, from which we receive the first ever message from aliens. Is it true? To answer the question, first we will go back in time. And in the comments section, we are waiting for your messages for aliens which you would send. It's the sultry summer of 1977. The revolution has recently died down in Ethiopia. Jimmy Carter officially took up the office as President of the United States, and the students and professors of Ohio University are on vacation. But Jerry Iman didn't go on this weekend. Jerry is an astronomer who, in addition to his main job, is a volunteer of the Organization for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI. Basically, people there are engaged in scanning space using radio telescopes. One of the main signs of a developed life is communication. Televisions, radios, smartphones, and other human satellites are emitting signals a lot. And if you listen well to the Earth from space, fragments of our favorite TV shows can be detected. So, SETI is trying to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction, listening to the universe in different ranges. This task is not an easy one. In space, everything is continuously moving. Moreover, the distances between the stars are so big that every signal there fades and blurs sufficiently. For example, if you send one bit of non-directional information into space after reaching Mars, it will already be blurred to 10 centimeters. And on Alpha Centauri, it will reach 27 kilometer waves. And how do you suggest catching such a bit and understanding that it is part of the word hello, which you encoded with binary code and sent to the aliens into the void, where the signal also met with the signals of pulsars, stars, and some kind of magnetars? It's a difficult task, but people from SETI have developed a clear algorithm that separates a potential sign of alien origin from the noise which is standard for space. Actually, this is what Jerry Iman is doing. He's sorted the signals received by the Big Ear Telescope over the past week. The job is as routine as possible, because 99% of the recordings were reflected signals from the Earth, flying comets, or standard cosmic radiation. But one entry from August 15, 1977 attracts Jerry's attention. Firstly, the telescope caught a strong signal. To be more precise, it is 20 times stronger than signals of natural origin from space. Secondly, the signal frequency was very narrow and not as usual spread it in a wide range. Thirdly, the signal lasts exactly 72 seconds, and it completely correlates with the behavior of the Earth. Any artificial message from space due to the rotation of our planet had to be in the range of the receiver for 72 seconds. And as the planet rotates, at first it will be weak, in the middle it will increase power, and then fade out again when the planet turns away from the source. This is exactly what Iman saw in the report for August 15th. Not believing his eyes, the astronomer printed out the signal to check it again. The data completely agreed with the template of a hypothetical alien message that was theoretically calculated in SETI. Stunned, Jerry circled a group of symbols corresponding to the signal and being in shock, wrote WOW on a piece of paper. Under this name, the signal went down in history, and even after half a century, the WOW signal is still the most likely candidate for a message from aliens. An explanation was found for all suspicious signals found later. Often they turned out to be pulsars, neutron stars, or terrestrial signals reflected from satellites. But WOW, astronomers still can't explain. Jerry Iman himself at one time stated that the WOW signal is terrestrial. However, after a thorough analysis, he refuted his own words. Because at the moment, there was nothing big enough in orbit to reflect the signal so strongly. In 2017, Antonio Paris from Florida stated that the WOW signal came from Comet Christensen or Gibbs. In 1977, they were not yet known to mankind, so they were not taken into account in the calculations. However, this hypothesis was also refuted. As it turns out, the comets on the night of August 15th were not in the field of view of the telescope. A similar fate awaited a dozen other assumptions. Time after time, they were refuted. To this day, science cannot prove that the WOW signal is not alien. Scientists, in turn, decided to approach the problem from the other side. They simply calculated the area of the sky where the telescope was pointed on August 15, 1977 
and began to look to stars suitable for life there. Jerry Iman also participated in this procedure, but the amateur astronomer Alberto Caballero went the furthest. Back in 2020, he took the Gaia telescope database from open source and plugged himself into calculations, and he found 15 candidate stars at once which, according to our known knowledge of the universe, can be inhabited. Basically, these are stars similar to the Sun. Consequently, planets similar to Earth can be found near such stars. For the last two years, Alberto and other scientists have been checking the calculations, and on May 6, 2022, the study was published. Caballero found the most suitable star for the origin of life in the area from where we received the WOW signal. This is an unremarkable star with a name that we probably won't pronounce. However, its luminosity, temperature, and diameter are almost identical to the Sun. According to the scientist, if the signal is really alien, then this star, given the current knowledge of science, has the best potential for the presence of habitable planets. A lot of media immediately replicated the news with headlines about alien contact. But in reality, everything is a little more complicated. Firstly, the WOW signal was never repeated again. For 50 years now, with the help of more modern equipment, they have been trying to detect it again, but it does not work out. On the other hand, this may be an indirect confirmation of an alien origin. But on the other hand, a single signal can always be an equipment error or an accident. Secondly, our ideas about life are limited only by the Earth. We have created bombs to destroy billions of people, but we are still unable to give life to an ordinary butterfly out of nothing. It is possible that life in space is possible in conditions other than Earth, and in turn, it may not be there, where everything seems obvious to Earthlings. And thirdly, we still cannot confirm that the WOW signal came from the system of this star, and the fact that there are planets there at all. The situation is aggravated by the fact that the star is located 1,800 light-years from Earth, so it's not the easiest object to study, and there is also little practical sense. Even if the WOW signal came from a planet in this system, it was sent back in the days of the Roman Empire, and our answer will be received in 1800 years. By the way, it was sent with the help of the Arecibo Observatory in 2012. So, in 3812, hypothetical aliens will also break their heads over 10,000 tweets that terrestrial astronomers decided to send them. In general, despite the serious discovery, the global situation has changed little. We can neither confirm nor deny that the WOW signal is alien, but here the James Webb Telescope can take the stage. For it, such distances are like sweet cakes. Considering that one of the main tasks of the telescope is the search for exoplanets, it fits perfectly to solve the riddle. Most likely, in the near future, astronomers will get their hands on studying a potentially habitable system from where we receive the signal. In the meantime, we will keep our finger on the pulse of events and we will be very glad if you subscribe to the channel so as not to miss anything. See you again, friends!